Let's get into our PhD programs. Or PsyD, you know, I'm not judging. Hello, if you're new here, my name is Neka. I'm a 28 year old living in New York City. I currently attend Columbia University Spirituality Mind Body Institute, getting my master's in clinical psychology, and I'm also a yoga instructor at Core Power Yoga. So I am a little stressed. <laughs> I'm entering my last semester potentially at Columbia and also applying to graduate programs, well, doctoral programs at the same time. If you're in the same boat as me, which you might be, that might be why you clicked on this video, Video, it's very stressful and very hard to navigate so I figured we could do it together and I can give you all the tips and tricks that I learned along the way and we can successfully hopefully get in our first time applying but who knows if that's gonna happen it's fine it's fine we're gonna give it our best shot so first things first when you're applying to doctoral programs you want to kind of understand the options you have available so there are PhD programs that are typically five to seven years and are fully funded. That means that the university ends up paying you to take and like actually get your PhD. So typically in return, you're doing a lot of research papers for them, you're teaching classes or maybe you are assistant teaching classes. But long story short, you're basically working for the university and the highest stipend or the highest like kind of salary I've seen for doctoral students was like 60,000. The lowest I've seen is like 30,000 and then, you know, right in the middle there around 40, 45,000 a year. Which, if you're anything like me <laughs> and had a full career before this, I was making probably double that amount. So it's a huge adjustment, but it's free. So instead of, you know, taking out hundreds of thousands of student loan debt, it is fully fully, fully funded. The second option for doctoral programs in psychology is getting your PsyD. Now, I've chatted with a couple of PhD students at Columbia just to get kind of like their say on it, like if they thought the PhD was a good route, if not. One person in particular told me that he saw the PsyD as like medical school, but unfortunately because they were an international student, they were not kind of eligible. I do like the idea of thinking of PsyD programs as like kind of psychology like med school. So essentially it's a lot shorter, it's typically around four years. Some people finish in three, but four years is typically how long the program takes. And you get all the same training and qualifications, you do your internship, but you don't have as much of a requirement to do research and create publications for the university and you might also not have to do like teaching assistance and stuff like that. PsyDs aren't as focused on preparing you to be like a professor or a researcher. They're more so focused on preparing you to be a clinical psychologist, so seeing patients and taking on patients. You still get that with a PhD, you still see patients, you still take patients, but you also have that added layer of like being trained to be like a professor. So doing like a lot of research at schools, doing a lot of teaching, mentorship, like my mentor now for, or my advisor right now for my master's program at Columbia is a PhD student, which basically he's responsible for our entire cohort, which is like 50 of us, which is a lot. But if you wanna be a teacher, it's a really good, you know, kind of training to set you up to be a professor where you have classes of like 20 to 50 kids. All that being said, with those two options, you kind of have to decide whether you want to go the PhD route or the PsyD route. PsyD programs usually aren't funded, so you're probably paying $40,000 a year to go to school to get your degree, but hopefully because you'll be out faster, maybe like two or three years faster than the PhD track, you'll have more time to earn that money back. <laughs> So for me, I'm actually going to be applying for both PhD programs and PsyD programs and I want to see kind of like where the cookie crumbles. I think my priority right now is, hmm, actually I may not have one. So to be clear, I do have a top choice for PhD programs and then I also have a top choice for PsyD programs, but I'm kind of, I don't 
really have a preference for a PhD over a PsyD. I like that, you know, the PhD, you get paid. But I also like that the PsyD, you save a lot of time and it's more focused on what I want to do, which is therapy. <laughs> we'll see what happens there. But my advice to you, as we we're just now getting started, is August 26th. And if you're in school, school's gonna be starting up again. But our goal for episode one is to finish our CV. So I'm gonna walk you guys that process too. But before that, I'm like, was there something else I wanted to say? Something else, something else. Oh, you need to kind of decide what programs you want to apply to. I kind of based my criteria off of location. So like, do I have family nearby? Do I have friends nearby? Is it a place I can see myself living for four years at minimum? Um, then also price. So how expensive is the program? Which basically is PsyD versus PhD. And then like potential scholarships and stipends, everything that the programs have available. And then What's very important for PhDs that you actually don't have to consider for CITES is your PI. A PI is a primary investigator. A PI, a primary investigator, is basically who you are applying to if you're applying to PhD programs. This is very different from PsyD programs. PsyD programs are a little bit more traditional in which you're applying to get into that school. So while you do still want to do your research on the faculty and identify someone you want to work with, they are more open to just accept more students because they're not going to have that one-on-one -on -one mentor relationship. It's more of a school relationship in which you're studying to learn information and they're kind of like putting you out into the world. Versus PhDs, this is a huge, huge difference. When you apply for PhD programs, you're applying to work with a, protect, a particular <laughs> Professor, So that's going to be your primary investigator or your PI. So you want to see who is taking on students in the PhD program and kind of map if your interests and their interests align if you, and if you want to work with them for the next four years. This is actually a very different way of kind of applying to schools if you, I mean, you probably have to apply to undergrad and maybe a master's program if you did. It's very interesting because like if your professor moves, so let's say you apply to work with Dr. Walker at the University of Illinois. If Dr. Walker leaves the University of Illinois and maybe goes to the University of Chicago, guess what? You, as you're still studying your PhD under them, are now going to be attending the University of Chicago. So if your PI moves, you also move with your PI. So it's really doesn't matter what university you go to, even though it does, you know, on a piece of paper. Ultimately, when you're applying to PhD programs, you're looking to apply for a person. So also why it's a lot more competitive to get into PhD programs because one person can only mentor so many people. So like they can't have like, you know, 20 personal mentor ease all starting their first year at the same time. So usually a professor will take maybe one or two maybe three new mentors on, which is why acceptance rates for PhD programs are uh, not hot. It'll be like 300 people apply, 15 people get in because there's only like five professors that are taking applicants and like they can only handle three new people. So uh, yeah, that's why I'm also applying to PsyD programs. <laughs> So I kind of want to show you guys my dashboard. Maybe I'll record this part on my phone. Okay, so basically I have 14 schools on my list that I'm currently going to apply to. I honestly, by the time September rolls around, because I was doing this work over the summer, I don't know if every PI or every university that I was interested in if they're going to be like accepting new students. So that's something I'm gonna solidify in September and I highly recommend applying to like at least 10 schools if you're able to afford it. Um, there is still gonna be an application fee, which sucks. And I've been seeing them around like 50 to $65. Some schools do have application waivers, just something to take into account. Like 14 I think is a little bit too many, that's like, Oof, I'm like, how? Quick math, like $800? Well, I don't want to pay that much. So I'm hoping to be around 600. 
I also wanted to talk to you guys about CVs. So let me pull up mine now. It's not looking too, too great. So as you guys know, I had an entire career before this in which I worked in tech. And while I really loved it, I just knew in my heart that like, this was my calling. This is something I always wanted to do and I just wasn't feeling like, super fulfilled in my job. So I am definitely gonna leverage that still. I'm gonna leverage my yoga experience and my professional experience to hopefully make me more of a unique candidate for doctoral programs, but also something that you should really take into account. Why is it not here? Oh my God. What the hell? Oh my God. Okay, so all of the work that I put into my doctoral CV is now gone. Great! Well, I'm happy we're doing this together because now I know that I need to redo some of this. But some of the things that you should have on your CV that's different than like a regular resume is one, you want to call out all of the research experience you have. So for me, that kind of just means moving them out of my professional experience and then creating a new subsection for like research experience. Another thing you want to make sure you include is any publications you may have. I have none, <laughs> but I'm working in some labs, so hopefully I can get something by the time December rolls around um, when most of the applications are due. Another section you want to have is like con conferences and presentations. So any conference in which you had like a poster or you gave a talk, definitely want to include that there. This. Like, please do not be frightened because truthfully, like, I just kind of fell into, like, the whole, like, clinical psychology world, like, basically a year ago, and I don't have all this experience, is what I'm trying to say. Like, I don't have any presentations right now, I don't have any publications right now, so hopefully by the time December comes around, we can get some together, but if you don't have any, don't fret. Like, honestly, just put your best foot forward. A lot of people have to apply to PhD programs or society programs more than one time, but it just helps you know like this is what the admissions committee is looking for and then if you have any teaching experience or leadership experience i might kind of lump that into one um you can kind of put like leadership positions in your lab or tutoring experience that you might have or like you know whatever teaching experience you had one of the people in my peer group mentioned that they put like camp counselor um and they're like teaching and leadership experience because it literally had the name counselor in it and that would be really cool you can also add like volunteer experience too and then any honors and awards that you might have it might not seem like a huge deal to you like oh i got this scholarship when i went to undergrad because like everyone who applies gets this scholarship but you definitely still want to put it on your PhD or PsyD application because that is something that they're looking for and it just helps you stand out. After all that's been said, like a typical like professional resume is about one page. A CV, my love, is very, very long. So you honestly just wanna put as much information as possible. At our stage, if you're in the same boat as me, it'll probably be between two and three pages long, but now I have to redo like my whole CV because clearly I didn't save it. I don't know why that happened. I feel a little bit like Little House on the Prairie with like my pigtails and like my little striped dress. <laughs> but I don't know. I think it's really cute. I also wanted to show you my hair this morning, but literally I checked the humidity and it's 85 degrees. So I was like, oh no. I'm not even gonna waste my time. Which also pro tip for my natural girlies, like before you do your hair, check the humidity. Because if anything over 50, you just do a protective style, put your hair away, because anything you do to it, it's just gonna poof up. Wow, so off track. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to thank you guys so much for watching. I plan on doing these videos on like a monthly basis just to kind of hold me accountable for you know applying to doctoral programs this winter and then I also hope they help you please 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 let me know in the comments if there's anything I missed that you're looking for or any questions that you had about the PhD process or this ID application progress process I'm honestly doing it for my first time now and 
my family, like my dad has a master's degree or an MBA in business. Um, but my mom like just has her undergrad degree and did like a technical school so I don't have a lot of resources of people who like went through this process so I've really been leaning on the internet and I'm so happy to share anything that I've learned. I've done like a lot of group chats with friends and I'm in like this little cohort of people applying to PhDs now and we've been all helping each other so if there's any way that I can help you please let me know in the comments below. I definitely want to see more people of color in the mental health space and more people of color getting advanced degrees. So we're all in this together. Please subscribe if you haven't already. My goal is to get to 1,000 by the end of the year. And as I'm recording this, we're at 779. So I'm going to love you and leave you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Never break us up. Oh God, they can only try to keep up.